Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Centennial Conference Corner. My name is Amber Thomas, and today I am joined by Haverford College alum and professional baseball player, Stephen Ridings. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Doing well. Happy to have you. Thank you. Happy to be here. So you are just one of 11 Centennial Conference players to be drafted and the first to make it to the major leagues. Uh, what does that feel like? Uh, it's pretty special, you know. I mean, I remember back in 16 when there were, I want to say, like five of us drafted. And I know, you know, Tommy got drafted the year before me. So I didn't think it was all that uncommon. And then when I made my debut, I found out I was like the first to play in the majors. And I was like, oh, I, I had no idea. I just assumed somebody had made it at some point. So it was uh, it was pretty cool to hear that I was the first. Yeah. So thinking back to your early days at Haverford, was the goal always the major league? Or? Every kid's dream is to play professional baseball. And I came to Haverford because I knew I would have an opportunity to play, to develop and have a great education. And it was definitely on my mind. I didn't know how feasible it would be um, until my junior year when I had, you know, a bit of a bump in in talent and and all that but it was always it was always on my mind yeah thinking back to that time what would you tell your younger self Just work hard and eat <laughs> <laughs> and eat <laughs> so if i look at your story on paper it just seems like a story of resilience Absolutely. so um, from the surgery to being a substitute teacher and then making it and signing a deal with the Yankees. Uh, what has been the hardest part of your journey so far? And what would you say has been your biggest lesson? My hardest part was probably that first surgery right after I got drafted. Um, going from a D3 school to professional baseball is a huge transition in and of itself. Um, and then not having the opportunity to really immerse myself in that experience was tough. Uh, I spent pretty much the first full year just in Arizona away. I didn't get to come back to school to, you know, help work on my degree. Um, the complex was pretty much empty because you know, it was the off season. Everybody was home. It was me and, uh, maybe three or four other guys at most. Um, I think only maybe one of them even spoke English. Uh, so it was kind of just a, a rough first experience of pro ball being off on my own like that for so long with nobody there. Um, and I think, yeah, I think that was definitely like the hardest part of the journey so far. Yeah. From that, what would you say was your biggest lesson and something that still sticks with you? I mean, keep working is always the the easy takeaway. Um, there were probably plenty of things that I didn't necessarily learn along the way, but I learned in hindsight as a result of, you know, how I did things during that rehab process that I, if I had to go back, I would do differently. Was it really important for you to go back to make sure that you finished out your degree? Definitely, yeah. Um, you know, my mom would never let me hear the end of it if I didn't, <laughs> uh, nor, would, nor would my friends and family and, and everybody close to me in life. But I, I, it was something I, I was proud of uh, to be able to accomplish because I know not a, lot of, not a lot of people end up going back to finish that, you know, once they get into pro ball. Um, but to have to physically go back, not be able to take classes online because uh, I was a chemistry major, everything pretty much had to be in lab. So, you know, I took pride in the fact that I was one of the, the few guys I knew to, to go back and, and complete it. Yeah, as you should, that's a huge accomplishment, especially in the midst of everything else you were working on. Uh, so I know you talked a little bit uh, earlier about that major league debut. Uh, what was that moment like when you stepped on the mound for the first time and playing for the Yankees, the 100 mile per hour pitch, like what was going through your mind uh, during that game? 
the first pitch, the only thing that was going through my mind was if this ball doesn't go 100 miles an hour or more, I, I should just walk off the field. I didn't really care where it was going. I just knew I wanted to throw this first pitch as hard as humanly possible. And then from right. there, it's time to, okay, now it's time to actually actually pitch. I think I just had to get that first one out of the way. We just have to ask uh, a couple more get to know you type questions before we let you go. Sure. Uh, so since you served as a substitute teacher, I have to know growing up, what was your favorite subject in school? Either math or physics. Explains what the chemistry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So in your time at the Centennial, what would you say was your favorite Centennial memory? Oh, it had to be my junior year. We played four games at Hopkins, and we won all four of them, including the last two to win the Centennial title. Probably by far my favorite. It was a good feeling. Good feeling. <laughs> so I know athletics can definitely have, bring a lot of superstitions, and I know in baseball there's also superstition. So is there any rituals – or things that you have to complete before a game for, you know, you to, you to get in your, your mood and in your groove? I'm weird about superstitions. They're, like, the big ones that I'm, like, I don't necessarily believe in. Like, uh, I'm trying to think of one off the top of my head. Like, there's the big, the big ones that I, I go along with because everybody thinks they're a big deal. You don't talk about <laughs> the number. You don't talk about how quick the game is going. Um, personally, my own superstitions lie more just within like probably articles of clothing that I like to wear. If I have a couple okay. of outings with a certain pair of socks, like I'll make sure I wear those socks on game days or something like that. So what's the longest cycle of keeping these socks? Uh, they go through the wash and eventually you get them. <laughs> those become the new socks that you wear. Oh, so. Okay. And those are the new lucky socks. It's almost like the, <laughs> the superstition kind of like dies out the longer you use it for okay. me. Um, it could be a glove too. Like I, I'm, I use the same glove in games all year as opposed to switching it up every now and then. But. Yeah. So I saw that you're six, eight. So I have to know if yeah. you weren't playing baseball, what other sport would you be playing? I mean, the obvious answer is basketball. Um, yeah. I think, even probably in college, I enjoyed playing basketball more than I did baseball. Um, I just hated the running. So I, <laughs> I quit after my sophomore year of high school. And I always kept playing. I just never played, like, on a team competitively. It would always be pick up basketball with my friends or at Haverford playing intramurals. Uh, it was a lot of fun. But that would definitely be my, my next pick. Well, running is definitely a, uh, an important part of that game. <laughs> it wasn't for me. <laughs> well, thank you, Stephen, for taking out some time out of your day and joining us. No problem. Every, everyone, you can catch a new episode of the Centennial Conference Corner on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Centennial Conf and on our website, centennial.org. And until next time, we'll see you later. Bye. Thanks for having me.